हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू नमस्ते कनाडा मैं हूं नीरज अभी की जो वीडियो है ये काफ़ी खास वीडियो है और इसका टाइटल है हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंस एक्सप्लेन बाय डॉक्टर गौतम देसी राजू अभिजीत चावड़ा पॉडकास्ट 22 ये अभिजीत चावड़ा जी के यूट्यूब चैनल से है और ये वीडियो स्पेशल इसलिए है क्योंकि इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंस जो है वो मॉडर्न डे इंडिया का साइंटिफिक पेनेकल है साइंटिफिक एंड इंजीनियरिंग एजुकेशन का और आ, मुझे बचपन से काफ़ी फैसिनेशन रही है आईएससी से मैं वहाँ जाना भी चाहता था और मैं एक बार विजिट भी कर चुका हूँ अपना एक पेपर प्रजेंट करने के लिए तो मैंने आई कैंपस को देखा है लेकिन इस वीडियो से हमें उसकी हिस्ट्री के बारे में पता चलेगा कि आ, कैसे आई एस जो है वो सेटअप हुआ और क्या क्या मेजर साइंटिफिक कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन वहाँ से निकली हैं तो मैं बहुत एक्साइटेड हूँ इस वीडियो को देखने के लिए लेकिन वीडियो देखने से पहले अगर आपने चैनल सब्सक्राइब नहीं किया तो प्लीज चैनल को सब्सक्राइब करके हमें सपोर्ट जरूर कीजिए ताकि हम ऐसी इंफॉर्मेटिव वीडियोस आपके साथ देखते रहें और अपने विचार आपके साथ शेयर करते रहें तो चलिए फिर करते हैं ये वीडियो स्टार्ट It's a pleasure to have you here at the Indian Institute of Science, and yes, it is indeed a pleasure to talk to you again uh, after the recent podcast. But now I am seeing you live. Yes. And I understand that this is also a bit of a novelty for you. It is a novelty for me. Yes, मैंने भी साइंस के सामने जाके फोटो खिंचवाई थी. बहुत मजा आया था. मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगा था. Let's continue. Because I've never done an in-person live podcast ever, so it's the first time for me also. It is a first time for everything. Indeed, sir. It's no better place to do to do a first time than this. That's for you to say, not <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah, for me it's a it's a wonderful experience. What a beautiful place it is. So let's talk about the Indian Institute of Science, which is I mean the premier institution for science in India. So what's what's the history like? This place is very interesting indeed Abhijit. Uh behind us you see the statue of this great man Jayan Tata mm -hmm. and who was one of the people instrumental in setting up this institute. And uh, this is well known I mean he was in a ship traveling from Yokohama to Yokohama to California. Mm -hmm. and one of his co-passengers in the ship was swami vivekananda i see uh, and so these two gentlemen got to talking with each other and the swami ji had some ideas about starting a place uh, for the higher education mm -hmm. of students and in his words he said a place where young men can lead an austere life austere life austere yeah let's see look at that word austere mm -hmm. austere life while they pursue higher goals and things and uh, tata was already in his mind he had an idea of starting a top class indian university mm -hmm. he wanted to do that and he had been talking about it for some time now this was the late uh, 19th century okay. i think 1895 or 96 something of that sort mm -hmm. and so then he put uh, he start he put up a small committee with a gentleman called uh, burjorji padsha okay who was an educationist mm -hmm. in bombay at that time and then they had started getting some ideas about where to start how to start and so on mm -hmm. please remember that we were at the height of the colonial regime yes, yes. and so these people actually went and sought an appointment with the lord curzon mm -hmm. who had just then been appointed as a viceroy and uh, but i mean our ideas are good and so on and so on and people were thinking like this mm -hmm. but uh, money you yes money and you need a place to set things up yes there was some decision about bangalore also okay to my understanding mm -hmm. i think roorkee was mentioned i see uh, bombay itself was mentioned mm -hmm. many of tata's friends said why don't why don't you do it in bombay okay so for various reasons he decided in bangalore but i think the main reason was that this uh, vast campus mm -hmm. i believe it is something like 471 acres 16 guntas of okay. land mm -hmm. was uh, given for this project okay by the uh, dowager maharani of mysore state okay now this is an extraordinary extraordinary lady mm -hmm. who was forced to act as regent mm -hmm. when she was younger than 30 because the death of her husband mm -hmm. 
camera jo wadi hai that age of 30 or 31 i see in calcutta and so she had a minor son mm. actually two minor sons on her hands mm-hmm. and so she became the regent and was ruling on behalf of her son okay so the story goes that uh, the then divan of mysore sheshadri ayer mm-hmm. he approached her and said you know madam this is this proposal that jain tata is is putting up and you know he mentioned i think something about vivekananda and so on okay and the story goes that uh, she asked him what do they want mm-hmm. so he said that this 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 they want a land to start and i believe in less than a minute she said how about that piece of land uh, here in in this particular location i see and uh, you give it to them wow that's it that's, <laughs> that's it. the whole decision making so i want especially young uh, viewers of your this program podcast mm-hmm. to see that when you have highly moral and honest leaders yes whether it is sheshadri air or this dowager queen mm. and i think her name is so little heard or mentioned i see that i think i should spell it out it's a very very long name you know maharani was called what is it kempananjamanni vani vilasa sannidhana that was her full name i see and commonly known as maharani vani vilasa okay in mysore bangalore and all these places hmm. and her son of course was the great king to be krishna raja wadiyar the fourth okay so he is the person who is normally known as raja rishi and so on and so on okay and uh, you think about the institute the way it started the fortunes of the mysore royals uh, and this institute mm-hmm. is very closely tied up and in this day and age when you know so many people talk about so many different things this that and the other mm-hmm. uh, please remember that when the rulers are forward looking i would use the word dharmic even yes when the rulers are like this then the institutions are bound to prosper yes and uh, the subsequent history also goes you see jayan tata died before the project could even be sanctioned and started i see but uh, the successor was dorab tata mm-hmm. his son and uh, maharani also passed on the kingdom to krishna javadiyar this okay. was about 10 years later mm-hmm. and vivekananda also passed away by this time but then you see he also had a successor in the form of sister nivedita yes now sister nivedita was an english woman mm-hmm. as you know and so she had lots of influence so something like this obviously cannot be started without the active support or co- at least cooperation of the british government yes so she introduced dorab tata to influential people in london okay and so they started lobbying for this mm-hmm. and so with all this plus that lord curzon and everything by 1908 the charter was given okay and almost immediately they started building this grand building uh, which we are facing right now right <laughs> and so then the whole thing got started so you see there were originally three people mm-hmm. jayan tata maharani vivekananda three people and then you get them then next generation maharaja dorab tata and sister nivedita right. so you i must say ki ye visionary logon ki soch hai jinhone itne badhiya institute ko jo hai wo janam diya aur isme aap uh, पॉलिटिशियंस uh, जो उस समय पे राजा uh, राजा थे महारानी का आप योगदान देखिए और साथ साथ स्पिरिचुअल uh, जो लीडर थे उनका योगदान देखिए और साथ साथ एक बिजनेसमैन का योगदान देखिए तो इनकी एमेलगमेशन ऑफ आइडियाज़ के साथ एक वर्ल्ड क्लास इंस्टीट्यूशन जो है वो इंडिया में शुरू हुआ जो कि आज तक uh, और आने वाले समय कई सालों तक जो है वो इंडिया की इकॉनमी में और इंडिया की इंटलेक्चुअल डेप्थ में कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट करता रहेगा लेट्स कंटिन्यू सी दीज सिक्स पीपल इफ यू आस्क मी were really responsible for the beginning of this place and there's another thing point abhijit which mm-hmm. is very important to remember that when the whole thing is set up in an honest and moralistic way mm-hmm. it will stand the test of time right you don't need fancy governments and fancy policies and things being announced here and there this whole thing took 5 minutes to sanction indeed yes and it has lasted now almost 120 years right so many generations of people have come and gone yes yeah. That's a very very strong point कि अगर आपको कोई काम करना है जो कि long lasting होगा और जो कई लोगों की life को impact करेगा अब 
इस इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंस में जो पढ़े हैं उनकी लाइफ को तो इम्पैक्ट करा ही करा है लेकिन उस एलुमिनाई ने बाहर निकल के कितना कंट्रीब्यूट किया है सोसाइटी को तो बहुत लार्जर इम्पैक्ट हुआ है इस इंस्टीट्यूट का और उसका डिसीजन जैसे ये राइटली पॉइंट आउट कर रहे हैं कि फाइव मिनट्स में हो गया दिस इज़ अ वेरी स्ट्रॉग पॉइंट क्योंकि आजकल हम देखते हैं कि फाइलों में चीज़ें दबी रहती हैं और एक पॉइंट से दूसरे पॉइंट तक ट्रैवल करती रहती हैं लेकिन अगर आपको आपके जो विजन क्लियर है और उसका इम्पैक्ट आपको क्लियर है तो जो डिसीजन मेकिंग जो है वो भी क्विक होगी तभी वो विजन जो है वो रियलिटी में तब्दील होगा और आईएससी बेंगलोर जो है वो एक एग्जांपल है उसकी लेट्स कंटिन्यू सो इट जस्ट गोस टू शो दैट व्हेन द थिंग इज स्टार्टेड प्रॉपर्ली अगेन एंड अगेन आई यूज द वर्ड ऑनेस्ट एंड आई मीन ऑनेस्ट इन द हाईएस्ट सेंस एंड दैट्स समथिंग दैट आई फाइंड आई हैव बीन इन दिस इंस्टीट्यूट फॉर अबाउट 15 इयर्स नाउ हैविंग स्पेंट अ मेजर पोर्शन ऑफ माय करियर अर्लियर इन यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ हैदराबाद बट द लास्ट 15 इयर्स आई मीन आई नो दिस इंस्टीट्यूट very well because my family hails from these parts i see so the, this is not a strange place for me even before i came here and uh, certainly we are connected with people in mysore and so we know people from the royal family and so on and so on so I it's see. not it's not that this is a new stuff for me mm-hmm. but i would once again say because of these high tradition set up everybody in this institute from the sweeper to the director feels that this institute is bigger than them right mm-hmm. and this again is another unique place in india scientific institution wise where the institution is much much bigger than the people who lead it right the institution has got inherent institutional strength i see so that nobody who is privileged enough to get into these portals mm-hmm. feels like abusing that privilege i see so we all feel that there is something called the institute tradition <laughs> the institute way of doing things mm-hmm. that certain things are not done in certain ways because this happens to be iis i see this is very much rooted here and uh, it's very unusual in india very unusual when you find you know various institutions set up with large amounts of public money mm. subject to the whims and caprices of vice chancellors directors they come and go yes you know you have a director he wants to be called a professor mm-hmm. then a professor is there who wants to become called a director I see. this is not the spirit in which educational institution should be run it's not I about that i i completely agree aur ye point bahut zyada deep hai khas taur ke liye indian ecosystem ke liye ki log jo hain jinhone is isc ko banaya वो तो अभी चले गए लेकिन उस, उनका इम्पैक्ट और उनकी कंट्रीब्यूशन जो है वो हमेशा याद रखी जाएगी लेकिन उन्होंने कभी भी इंस्टीट्यूट के साथ जो है अपना नाम नहीं जोड़ा इसकी प्राइम एग्जांपल मैं आपको दूंगा इंदिरा गांधी इंटरनेशनल एयरपोर्ट आप ले लीजिए मतलब वो पॉलिटिशियन है भी नहीं चलो जो अगर आपकी कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन भी है तब भी नाम के साथ उसको क्यों जोड़ क्यों जोड़ना उसकी प्राइम एग्जांपल आपको आईएससी की दिख जाएगी क्योंकि हम मॉडर्न डे में बहुत सारा इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर देखते हैं जो पॉलिटिशियंस के नाम के साथ जोड़ा जाता है लेकिन अगर आपको वर्ल्ड क्लास चीज़ें बनानी हैं और थाट प्रोसेस जो है वो कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन का है और नेशन बिल्डिंग का है तो फिर आपको अपने नाम जो है एटलीस्ट वो आगे नहीं लेके जाने चाहिए लेट्स कंटिन्यू so yes yes and when you see uh, this refreshing change in a place like this matching the beautiful climate and building mm-hmm. i think that sort of gives you a sort of feeling for the um, history of this place but why don't we just try to walk in let's do that to the institute and just see a few of the buildings yes uh, you hear and a little more of the sense of history of this place we will probably be able to absolutely i appreciate in that way yes sir uh-huh. so this is the first building of the institute right Yeah I think it was the first building I think there were some ad hoc buildings Okay initially the must the must have been This thing came up I mean the entire institute was in this building All to of my it. understanding there were two departments mm-hmm. and two departments only Okay one was called general and applied chemistry Okay and that was somewhere there Right you know the other one interestingly was called electrical technology and that was somewhere here I see I was told that the library was on this ground floor thing I am not 100% sure about that okay uh, the whole thing was there and then there were two um, heritage buildings chemistry subsequently moved there to the eastern side and electrical technology moved this side and then became called physics, physics. that was the institute i see for about 20 30 years so how many buildings do we have today oh gosh i don't know i don't know most of these 400 acres are well built up okay and of course they have left a lot of lung space mm. in the form of these beautiful gardens yes which uh, blend really nicely with the whole uh, 
the whole atmosphere. But yes. I think we should go into the main building, right? Which is also called today the central office. Central office. Uh -huh, yes. I see. So now it's the administrative headquarters. Yes. I see. It is the seat of administration of the institute. Right. And you see that bust over there. Yes. He is Krishna Rajawadi of the fourth. I see. I see. The son of uh, the Maharani who gave the land. I see. So. He was a tremendous person mm -hmm. and uh, responsible for so many positive things in Mysore state. I see. I mean, uh, we were one of the first to get electricity in this country. I see. I see. Thanks to the Divan, Sir M. Vishweshwaraya. I told you, no? The, yes. Uh, first Divan was an engineer. Mm -hmm. He was on the governing council of IISC. I see. And it was he who named that uh, building electrical technology. I see. Uh, he didn't call it physics or something like that. So the idea, this is itself such a bold idea for 1908 that you start with something with an application oriented. Indeed, yes. Today, you know, I find I have been in Indian science now for 40 plus years, almost 45 years. Yes. So this whole idea that we have to have some places where you have some pure science going on and everything <laughs> outside that is impure. <laughs> this is, I think, a totally wrong way, fallacious way of looking at it. It is, yes. Science is science and in the end you can't divorce science from technology. It has to be applied to technology. Vishweshwaraya yes. started this Jogfall, Sharavati, all these projects. And another thing which he started, I must mention, since we are in the institute, is uh, he realized and Maharaja realized by then that these, after World War I, they had a large number of uh, logs. Logs? Logs from sandalwood trees. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they had some low level export of this. This is one of the few geographical areas where the sandalwood tree grows properly. Okay. And so they used to export and then they couldn't export in World War I, so they were stuck with all this. Okay. So then they wanted to figure out if something can be done with these logs. Mm -hmm. Then they got a very good chemist onto the mm. faculty of IISC. Okay. Uh, I forget his name exactly, but he is the one who suggested to them that you could take these logs and extract something from them called sandal oil. Sandal oil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that if those of you who have seen a bit of the sandalwood tree, uh, sandal bark actually, if you rub it and so on with a little bit of water, you get the beautiful smell of sandalwood. Yes. So they using a process called steam distillation, which is well known in chemistry, you they could get this sandal oil. Okay. And uh, in the far uh, southern corner of this campus, they started this small steam, steam distillation unit. Okay. And they started extracting this sandal oil. Now, one of the things you can do with oil of any type is that you can make soap out of it. Saponification. Saponification, yes. correct. That is the correct technical word you have used. Yes. Now, sapon is soap. the Latin word for, yeah. Savon in French. Savon in, savon in French, yes. yes. And, uh, Actually, sabbu in some of the South Indian languages. Yes. So it's not uh, etymologically, they're probably all related. It is. Yeah. So then they decided to make, and this was the origin of Mysore sandal soap. I see, yes. Which now, by the way, is a profit making industry even today. <laughs> I see. And there are some of us who swear by this soap and don't use anything else. I see. Uh -huh. And mm. so this is the whole thing started, and then the factory became so profitable that the Maharaja decided to move the factory to Mysore. Okay. Which is where it is housed, but there is still a large place in Bangalore where they are doing some of it. So it originated here? It originated in this campus, IISC. <laughs> so Amazing. Mysore Sandal. So once again, you say the industry has come hmm. first. Yes, yeah. So slowly the science will. See, the thing is, this whole lopsided thing today that first you have to say, start doing science write some papers and then get the papers recognized in some foreign country <laughs> and then only if the foreigner says that the papers are good, then they are good. Yes, it doesn't so make all The whole thing, this is this uh, colonial uh, thing. Mindset. Brainwashing yes. mindset. Yes, yes. It is now the ruination of Indian scientists today. It is, yes. It ये सिर्फ और सिर्फ इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन ऑफ साइंस में ही मैटर नहीं करता फॉरेन वैलिडेशन आपको हर जगह पे मिलेगा आईआईटीज में खास तौर पे और इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंस में इटसेल्फ भी स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम सेंडिंग पीएचडी थीसेस आउटसाइड तो 
आईआईसी और आईआईटीज जो है अपने पीएचडी थीसिस बाहर के लोगों से वैलिडेट करवाते हैं बिफोर गिविंग आउट पीएचडीज और दूसरा फैकल्टी हायरिंग में जब तक आपके पास फॉरेन रेफरेंसेस नहीं है तो आपका केस जो है वो वीक कंसीडर किया जाता है यू नीड स्ट्रॉन्ग फॉरेन रेफरेंसेज आई डोंट नो वाई बट ही इज पॉइंटिंग आउट इन द इशू राइटली लेट्स कंटिन्यू पीपल लाइक एंड एंड महाराणी महाराजा दे हैव दीज राइट आइडियाज दे हैव द राइट इज ऑफ दैट आवर प्रेजेंट चैप्स इन दिल्ली बेंगलोर ऑल दीज प्लेसेस द लैक लैक जीरो यस अग्री जीरो यस बिकॉज़ दे वरी मोर अबाउट फॉलोइंग द रूल्स हां दिस टेल्स मी अबाउट फॉलोइंग द रूल्स ओके एंड वी विल गो इन बिफोर आई टॉक अबाउट दिस द फर्स्ट डायरेक्टर ऑफ दिस प्लेस वाज एन इंग्लिशमैन ओके द फर्स्ट टू थ्री फोर डायरेक्टर्स वर इंग्लिश पीपल ओके so we will go to a special room yes. where some special english people's photographs are still put up let's take a yes. look now this Let's take some time to look at these pictures. This is the council room mm -hmm. of the Indian Institute of Science. Okay. And uh, very few people are allowed to come into this room. I see. So the viewers of the program look carefully and see all the things. There's a whole history of the institute here. This is Maharaja, of course. Uh, this is Krishna Raja Vadiar the fourth, mm -hmm. and uh, was also called Raja Rishi. Raja Rishi. Ah, mm -hmm. because he was. Uh, I mean, the whole system of roads, railways, mm. you know. Enlightened rule, right? There is a story mm. that when Mahatma Gandhi first came to Bangalore for his first public lecture, okay, he was especially nervous. Mm -hmm. And uh, after giving the lecture, he went away to Nandi Hills, which is near the today's Bangalore airport. Okay. So they asked him. The people asked him, "Why are you so nervous about this Bangalore?" lecture hmm so he said i believe he says maharaja is ruling the state so well hmm. and the people are so happy hmm. that i was scared that they may not want any change <laughs> and that they may not want independence i see and he got a very positive response hmm. from the crowd okay and then he said he was felt greatly relieved okay he said if the people of mysore want independence then he says then there is no doubt that this freedom movement will take root in this country i see so for him mysore was a test case it was the acid test it was for him the acid test right. in 1920 or 1921 i think was the time when he came and gave a public address in bangalore I see. so that is maharaja right and uh, this of course is the first president rajendra prasad yes and i think he was a member of the council or something in the beginning there is some he is not put here simply because he is president of india i see there is some connection with because all the other presidents are not here no 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 he is here yes now look at this this is a autographed photo of queen mary queen mary yes i see i told you some interesting photos of some interesting english people uh -huh -huh. are here mm. and the picture still hangs Yes which means we are respectful of history we are yeah history has to be i mean finally respected. it was 1911 was the year of the darbar no yes it was and it was just at that time when the institute was started started I functioning i see so it was very appropriate the whole thing was finally done in their name mm -hmm. because don't forget that the working expenses ha huh, this is another interesting point mm -hmm. uh, the mysore royals gave not only the land but also for running expenses i see the original figures as him to remember was that for running expenses they gave 50000 a year 50000 rupees a rupees year rupees a year at that time that time mm -hmm. tata gave 1.25 lakhs per year i see and the british government gave 75000 per year i see that some of these three numbers was the running expense of the institute okay additionally mm -hmm. for the capital expense tata gave one third of his fortune one third of his entire uh, fortune he divided his fortune into three uh One third for one son, one third for the second son, mm. and one third for IAS. Wow, that is a really, really big thing. JRD Tata ki ye jo contribution hai. Not only in monetary terms, क्योंकि हम सब ये सोचते हैं कि हम अपना empire बनाएंगे और बाकी सारी चीजें करेंगे. लेकिन one third अपने sons के साथ ही खुली बांटना 
एक ऐसे इंस्टीट्यूट के लिए जो कि इंडिया की साइंस की जर्नी में बहुत बड़ी कंट्रीब्यूशन देगा उस समय से और अभी तक दे रहा है और आगे भी देता रहेगा रियली रियली मार्सलेस थिंग थैंक्स टू हिम लेट्स कंटिन्यू आई सी सो दैट इज दैट वन हैज टू अप्रिशिएट दैट एक्सक्यूज मी आई नो आई मीन टुडे वी हैव गॉट सो मेनी मैग्नेट्स एंड दिस एंड दैट यस वुड एनी ऑफ दीस चैप्स गिव वन थर्ड ऑफ देयर फॉर्च्यून टू स्टार्ट वन इन एजुकेशन इंस्टीट्यूशन दिस इज किंग जॉर्ज अगेन अ साइंड फोटो ओके right there have been some comments by the way i should tell you okay as to why these portraits are hanging here etc et i see and then the institute has quite rightly maintained that all this is part of our heritage it's part of our history yes i mean mm. one shows it without any you know we're proud of all these people who have been directly or indirectly responsible and see i am mentioning these numbers because there is another rumor going about that uh, Tata gave all the money for the running expenses. The British government gave almost nothing. Okay. So that's why I'm telling the numbers. Mysore Royals fifty thousand, Tata one point two five lakhs, British government seventy five thousand. Right. Per year. Ah, per year. Right. In addition, the Mysore Darbar gave five lakhs as a capital grant to start things going. Okay. And one more thing, <coughs> talking about the di- we'll come to the directors there. I think. this i believe is william ramsey if i am not mistaken okay very famous british chemist okay who was on the first board which was conceiving the plant ramsey was a very famous chemist he discovered the rare gases okay like neon krypton etc I see, and I, see. i do believe he got a nobel prize for that i see so he sent his one of his good students morris travers mm-hmm. as the first director of this institute i see and uh, travers was an interesting chap mm-hmm. and he was so committed to the institute and one point of time they were running out of money to build this building okay ha huh? he took a personal loan of 2 lakhs <laughs> he took a personal loan of 2 lakhs to complete the construction i see and then got into a fight with burjor ji patsha mm-hmm. who told him this is against the rules i see so once again this tussle between a visionary scientist who is totally honest mm-hmm. and an honest bureaucrat who has wants to follow the rules honestly right so you see honest people can also fight with honest people yes about money right right and this raises an interesting point hmm. because this is a very relevant point in india today you know this this was also the, we don't have time to talk about this today but the whole tussle that one of the subsequent directors of this place cv raman okay had with the institute management mm-hmm. and which then led to his moving out of the institute i see yes he I was see. appointed director after his nobel prize i see and still after that there were people who fought with him mm-hmm. which means nobel laureates were not viewed as some demigods in those days in those days yes quite correctly mm-hmm. today if it's a nobel laureate people think ha 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 like that yes yes that he is god or he has come from heaven or something like yes. that nothing of the sort right they just order people like you and me yes who had in some extra vision or happened to find something long before others realized yes that's the only difference between nobel laureates and the rest of us yes sir. i that's what i find since mm. i know quite a few of them now at least right. from my subject so i can say that but you know coming back to padsha and uh, travers mm. i there a constant thing okay. should you follow the rules mm. the so called today all these famous departments dst csir various government ministries they are always telling us you know this is not as per this rule this is not as per that particular notification where is the thing provide the justification for that l1 I cheapest see. quotation i see mm. what cheapest quotation did padsha did uh, travers take when he took the 2 lakhs loan yes and still this building is standing yes without any leak or anything some of the buildings built according to all our government rules are leaking today yes unfortunately you please see that i mean yes yes it is a it is these are facts this of course is the great man this is jayan tata yes and this is burjor ji pacha i see so who was the conscience keeper i see of this institute yes and his role is often underestimated i see like the maharani mm-hmm. so these are all some of the you know heroes unsung heroes i see of this place right so anyway take a good look at the council room because mm-hmm. you know i'm glad we've been given the permission to come here and 
film a little bit inside. So what's happened here historically? Now, historically, the meetings of the council. Okay. So, so I mistook uh, JRD Tata with JN Tata. So JN Tata was the pioneer who started this. Let's continue. Which is the supreme executive authority of the place. I see. And uh, nowadays, with the permission of the director, in certain meetings with the director chairs uh, are held here. Okay. But things have to be at a certain level before a meeting is is held here. Held, held I see. It's not. It's not just any old room that I'm taking. This is hallowed ground. It's the hallowed ground, and there are very many people. I guess, especially students and so on, who come to this place, mm. who have never been inside this. Place. I see. Oh yes, I it see. is not a, it is not really a public uh, viewing place. I see. In that sense, so I hope they don't come and catch us afterwards. And, uh, <laughs> why did you film well, thank place? you for giving us the permission to to film here. Uh, chalo, let's go outside. You yes, asked sir. about the old buildings mm -hmm. on either side. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll just take a peep at the general and applied chemistry building. Absolutely. Which is actually the oldest department. I'm a chemistry person. Of so, course. So. Some vested interest in <laughs> Let's do that, sir. Let's do that. It's like a finger catching. So, uh, this is the thing I want to tell about myself that I loved organic chemistry when I was in high school. So, I scored like. Uh, I think there was a 70 marks theory paper and 30 marks practical paper. So I out scored 70 out of 70 in my 12th uh, chemistry. I was really good at chemistry and organic chemistry was my favorite one. Let's continue. Uh, so that one is the heritage. That is chemistry. one of the, the two buildings are identical. Okay, exactly. General and applied chemistry there. Uh -huh. and, electrical uh, technology. And electrical technology on that side. Right. So Raman was housed in that building. I see. And his chaps in, his enemies in chemistry were housed here. <laughs> enemies, did they have? Yeah, <laughs> they, they, they had good kusti. <laughs> I see. So again, it had to do with financial matters. Okay. okay. Raman simply said, a job has to be done. Mm -hmm. I have to spend this money quickly. Otherwise, yes. this job will not get done at the correct time. Yes. So, he simply took the money and started spending. Okay. So, then this, uh, these fellows started telling him, no, you're not allowed to do this. Procedure you have to follow the rules. L1, yes. L2, L3, whatever they talk. I see. So, the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, again and again, this problem has come back to haunt us. Mm. Bureaucracy and, and red tape. Somewhere, I tell you, Habichit, mm. Indian science is not going to take off if the present science bureaucracy of this country and by this bureaucracy I mean all the science departments, the ministers, mm. everything. Mm. They have to shed this. Scientists that way are not ordinary people. They're not. They're really not. You know, yeah. in fact, I tell so, how many of my students who want to get into a research career. Mm. Look, young man or young lady, the science is not a career meant for everybody. Yeah. You may do a PhD. Mm. But that simply means that you have learned some research methodology. Yes. An actual life in academics is something very different. It is, yes. And uh, it is, unless you, I don't want to use the word crazy, mm. but uh, you have to be able to think about things in certain different ways. You have to be obsessed with science. You have to be obsessed with science. You have to be willing to take risks, you know. Yes. Yes. You have to be at certain sense, I don't want to use the word gambler again. No. But there has to be some considered gambling. Mm -hmm. Because if something is known, then it's not research anymore. It's not research. I mean, how did <laughs> Raman actually, how did he discover this business which is called Raman scattering? Yes. Which then made him, you know, world famous and so on. Yes. He had a hunch. Mm -hmm. Others had done certain things, he found some gaps. Mm -hmm. And uh, then he came to this situation and then Fat, 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 one thing followed the other. Yes. And then there, Eureka, there was the result. Yes. And uh, so scientists are a little different. And yes. we are very, very different. Most of the times we can't even understand administrators. Yes. <laughs> we don't understand them, which is why this whole business of a scientist or some professor mm. going and sitting in Delhi as some secretary of this and this and that is, to my mind, slightly ludicrous. It is. Because very often these people who were, you know, good scientists, okay scientists, then they go there in some regime which they don't understand. Hmm. Uh, so somewhere, I think somehow at the highest level, 
we have to rethink this whole equation mm -hmm. of science and science administration. Absolutely. Do I we agree. need this much administration right. of science? Right. Do we need? Or are the administrators so worried about the fact that all scientists would be stealing all the money and you know having some fun with it? What fun see, will they have? <laughs> see, Burjorji Pacha had the same problem with uh, Maurice Travers. Okay. The chemistry department fellows here hmm. had the same problem with Raman on that side. I see. So here is the building. This okay. is the heritage building. Uh, it used to be called the inorganic and physical chemistry. Okay. And now very sadly, we have all moved into the ultra modern uh, chemistry building on the other end of the campus. I see. But uh, there are calls to, you know, use this heritage building properly. And uh, try to use it as a science museum or something for citizen science I see or uh, something else because this is all part of history yes science history and you know I have visited 30 40 countries in the world mm -hmm. uh, scientific institutions mostly then I find the affectionate care and almost love that they show towards their old buildings their old history and so on yes you know we don't have that we don't have that Do you know something you will be shocked if I tell you this. Mm. The famous uh, lab in North Calcutta in Bau Bazar, mm. where C. V. Raman discovered the Raman effect, mm. was uh, subsequently demolished by the earth. Oh, that is and tragic. And I think they sold it off and something, and then they moved somewhere else. Blah blah blah. No respect for heritage. Nothing. The, the, that's the root. If you go to America. This is really bad. I have seen it here in the US. I have seen it here in the computing science department. I have seen it in the computing science department that the starting computer and all the evolution of it in the real world. How did the first memory be made? How did the RAM be made? How did the storage blocks be made? How did the CDs come? How did the floppy disks come? All of this has been made from the computers. It is very important for motivation and for our history. To remember the history. Let's continue. America, UK and all that. There is a famous discovery, discoverer of nylon, discoverer of teflon. The labs where they discovered this is given a heritage plaque. It's an inspiration for students. In, and in fact, the American Chemical Society has come and put this heritage plaque mm. for Raman's thing. But okay. it is put in a new building where he did not do that work. I see, I see. That, that, is <laughs> that old lab, by the way, talking about royals. Mm. That old lab where Raman discovered that Raman effect is called the Vijayanagaram labs. Okay. Because the Maharaja of Vijayanagaram gave the money. I see, I see. Mm -hmm. hey, mm -hmm. To set up that lab over there in Bhavasan. Okay. So it's still called, it used to be called Vijayanagaram labs. Mm -hmm. So you look at these Maharajas. If you look at Jadapur University, the Maharaja of Tripura in 1906 gave 60 lakhs to start this Jadapur. I see. Oh. The other put to uh, oh, it's, it's a mess. beating up the governor and oh. this and that. See, so where is 60 lakhs? Where is this beating up the governor? This was not why he started the institute. This is not at all why he started. Nobody yes. knows what is Tripura. Yeah. From Tripura, he came and he gave the 60 lakhs. You Indeed. See that plaque in Jadapur. Because he had some vision for the country. So, right? whether it is the Mysore royals or the Tripura royals or the Vijayanagaram royals, these people were all dharmic fellows. Yes, agreed. And what I need to see really is. Much more dharma in our ruling classes today. It's not there today. It's not there. Zero. Yes. Something here, there, you know, just bargaining for some uh, bindi and tomato in some vegetable market. It has come down to that. So, you see this. That's why I do believe that some of the youngsters should see this program, look at the institute. Yes. See how <coughs> it was started. The fact that we've still not collapsed. It is very, very rare for a scientific institution to last 125 years in this country. Why was this institution started? for creating the scientific uh, community in India? Yes, it was called, original name given to it was Imperial Indian University. I see. I believe Curzon removed the word Imperial and said Indian Institute of Science. Okay, good. So that's, you know, lots of bad things are said about Curzon, but I'm told this is... This is one of the good things. One of did. the good things he did. He removed that word. <laughs> so at that time... And he was supposed to be an imperialist of the highest order. Of the highest order. I yes. divided Bengal and doing all those he things. He did that those same things. same Curzon. Yes. Uh, that fellow. <laughs> he made this particular change. So at that time we did not have any any corpus of scientists in India, right? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Zero. I see. They just had to start picking and then they found a few people and see somebody like Maurice Travers mm -hmm. is of such a high level that automatically he will attract other people. Okay. I suppose you know one of the reasons, this I think people should know. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons that 
Raman fought with the institute authorities is you will remember in the early 1930s the Nazi propaganda against Jewish scientists started. Yes. Which then ultimately led to the Holocaust. Yes. Now, at this time, Max Born, a German physicist, yes. one of the leading lights of quantum physics of yes. those days, yes. he was a Jewish professor who had lost his job. Mm -hmm. And simply with a letter, Raman invited Bond to come as a professor to the institute. Oh, here? Yes. I see. Bond came okay. with his wife. I see. And I believe spent even five, six years in the institute. And this is where the problem started with the administrators and Raman. Mm -hmm. They said you can't invite him. Unless Why we go through our regular selection committee procedure, put advertisement, <laughs> and then let all the candidates come. Otherwise, there will be a legal battle. So, let us sit and do the selection. Selection oh, has God. to be done only on a working day. It cannot be done on a holiday. <laughs> Otherwise, somebody will go to court. So, they started saying similar things. It's a very familiar story. It is totally familiar, which means that, you know, you, this mentality of ours, this Babu Giri. Babu Giri. Babu, he, yeah. he, it's not matching the personality of C.V. Raman yes. and Max Bond. Yes. Max Bond subsequently he moved to England. Okay. He went to Edinburgh mm -hmm. because again in the anxious days before World War II and he spent the rest of his career in UK mm -hmm. and he got a Nobel Prize in 52-53. Yes, for the Bond rule. Yes. Yes. So the, so the thing is that he was actually here. There is another name which I should mention in connection with the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. And this is an architect by the name of Koenigsberger. Mm -hmm. And he was similar, he had built many uh, neoclassical buildings in Berlin in the 30s. I see. And again, as a Jew, he was forced out. Okay. Where did the Divan N. Madhavrao say? He called Koenigsberger to Berlin. I see. And he has built and designed not only many buildings in this institute, but also several wonderful landmarks in Basangudi and all that in South Bangalore. I see, yes. So these buildings of Koenigsberger still exist in Bangalore. Mm -hmm. So you see, the, there has to be a certain, no, so suppose somebody had asked the Divan, why are you calling him? Mm. Is there not a better person? Yes. For what you are paying him, can somebody do a better job? Yeah. Again, L1. Mm. This, I, what I call this L1 mentality, mm. it, it has to go for me. Yes, there yes. Is, there is no other way about it. I completely agree, sir. There is too much interference from non-scientists in science. And they are trying to take control. And it's always, see, always about power and see, control. once again, I'll say, those people are not bad people. They, not bad. They, they like to follow the rules as given to them. They worship the rule book. They were, yeah. They put, it's a question that uh, it's all external form is okay. Mm -hmm. Internally, there is zero. Mm -hmm. And the scientists are the ones who can provide the internal content. Yes. A visionary like Bond, like Travers, like um, um, Raman. Mm -hmm. Another very famous director I must mention in this context is Sir J.C. J. C. Ghosh. Okay. He was a uh, director for a long time here in the pre-independence era and mm. he was the person who founded IIT Kharagpur. I see. Very again, I'm sorry, I'm mentioning chemistry people. He was also a very famous inorganic chemist. I see. And he is uh, rightly revered even today in Bengal. Not many people outside Bengal remember the name of Sir J.C. Ghosh. Okay. Gyan Chandra Ghosh. Gyan Chandra Ghosh. Ah, so he was uh, another person and he was here, he was director and since he was doing such a good job, they uh, said that, come on, we are start B.C. Roy said we are starting this new IIT Gharagpur. Mm -hmm. So you please come as the founder director. I see. And many people still feel that among the IITs, IIT Gharagpur is the best. I see. Ah, mm -hmm. it's, uh, I think it's perhaps the largest. I see, I see. And it was the only one that was set up without foreign collaboration. Okay. You know, Madras, Bombay, Delhi and Kanpur were set up with varying degrees of foreign collaboration. Okay. You know, Madras from the Germans, mm -hmm. uh, Delhi with from the English, mm -hmm. uh, Bombay from the Russians and Kanpur from the Americans. I see. But Karakpur is completely indigenous. I see, I see. And it mm -hmm. is largely to do with J.C. Bush. Okay. Is, uh, so once again, you see all these people who are there, and I think they were given a free hand. Mm -hmm. This free hand and above all this atrocity of taking working scientists and making them administrators in Delhi. <laughs> I think more than anything else, this has ruined the whole show. Right. Yeah. Because these people, I mean, I know many of them, they are all, all decent folk. Yes. But then they neither fit here nor fit.
that's another beautiful thing about higher level science. Mm. It's quite international. Yes. And uh, you see, you have people from different countries, different backgrounds, mm -hmm. totally different cultures. Yes. Different kinds of lives that they lead. Yes. And yet, when they come and start talking science, they, they Abhijit, know. it is exactly the same thing. Exactly the same. <laughs> the way, the way we do science. Yeah. Is different. Yes. But what we do or the goals we strive for yes. are exactly the same. So you feel a sense of camaraderie, camaraderie yes. right? Yes. In fact, people joke with me mm. and they say that I go to these conferences and much of the time I'm not uh, listening to the talks or I go away from the talks. Mm. This is because I'm in walks like this with mm. my colleagues who have come to the meeting. Yes. That is where the actual productive work happens. <laughs> the cross-pollination cross of ideas. We scientists, I tell you this. Mm. We Sorry. are not. We are not talkative mm. in public. Not in public. We are un uncomfortable yes. with going there in public, but we are very talkative with each other. Right. <laughs> Once you recognize another scientist as being in your peer group, there you go. You there. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there is right. an important conference in the world called Gordon Research Conferences in America, mm. and one of the rules in that Gordon Conference mm. is that nobody is allowed to take notes. Okay. And nobody is allowed to publicize anything that they might have heard from some other scientist in that conference. I see. So this is to ensure that only the ideas get discussed. Okay. And uh, nobody can that way, you know, it's is a very unique concept. Mm -hmm. we, we need more such. We need more of it. that, the informal we, kind of settings. We need, we need these such settings and yes. stuff like that. Yes. And yes, you are quite right. Scientists do love to talk when they walk. We are actually <laughs> walking our talk. Yeah, we are, that's what we do. Ha ha ha! Really, yes. really, really. Because I personally think better when I'm t walking. I can't sit and think. It's not possible for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know. It's difficult. Yeah, it's difficult. So, but this is. I think we need. We need somehow. I don't know. Uh, I keep coming back to this again and again. Today I've sort of got into this mood to talk about scientists and administrators. Yes. Something is terribly wrong. Yes, it is. In the way in which. Because don't forget in the end, we are still not a very rich country. Yes. We cannot afford to throw too much money here and there on science. Yes, there has to be prudence. Unless we know what, what we are doing. Yes. You know? Yes. So when Maharaja says, let's do that uh, sandal oil thing, mm. he is not a scientist. Yes. He somehow realized, then there was all these logs of wood lying there. Yeah. But he mm. was enough of a businessman to think mm. that, you know, there might be something. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, this is something which I feel is sorely lacking in our country. What needs to happen is that actual, genuine scientists need to be given certain sums of money and do what you will with it. Use it, use it for science and let them decide. Give them capital launch to use that much money. I, I wouldn't even mind uh, telling the scientist, hmm. this, this, this is the particular problem you have to solve. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay, yes. this, this is not just blue sky research, mm -hmm. but this, this, this is a particular problem you have to solve. Mm -hmm. If you can't do it in three years, then you're done. Bus, it's down. Yeah. This project is over. That's what DARPA does. That's what DARPA does. Yes. Yeah. See, what happens today is some of our scientists, including our so called uh, high and mighty, mm -hmm. they catch some idea. Mm -hmm. And then this will go on and on and on. Ah, okay, we're coming something, something interesting came. Okay, chalo, let's give him a little bit more to continue. It mm -hmm. looks like the work is. At a very interesting stage. Right, yes. This is how the people will talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is. Then it goes on cradle to grave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be a limited time frame, two, three to, years. There has to be time limits on yes. these uh, problems and programs because what is important today may not be important five years from now. Yes, yes. So Dedicate yourself you intensely. Mm. Three years, and that's it. You're done. You're done. You're done. Whether it works or not doesn't matter. But you get the money, and that's it. Three, I three years. No, I mean. We have still a long ways to go. We have to shake and up the entire uh, system the way it's done. And things simply, are done. simply standing outside in the public forum and mm. saying we are doing great, our scientists are great, we are very clever. Um, you know, mm. that uh, Satya Nadella and uh, mm. Sundar Pichai are earning high salaries. <laughs> they are working for somebody else. It doesn't else. prove anything. It doesn't prove anything. It doesn't prove anything. The it proves thing, that Indians are intelligent, that's all. Then from that's the all. scientist side. Yeah. Let me tell you, mm. I will be equally critical with my own tribe. Okay. You know, usually you write a paper. Mm. Yeah. Suppose you are in this applied research, you write a paper, mm -hmm. then you get a patent on it. Yes. Then you make a lot of money on the patent or mm. your institution makes. Mm -hmm. Then finally when it's all big and nice, 
then you go to the newspapers. Mm. The newspapers will come to you in that stage, mm. at that point. Yes. Now, what do our scientists do today? Mm. They do something or don't do something in the lab, I don't know. Mm -hmm. They first go to the newspaper. <laughs> okay. Mm. The mm. rest follows. I see. So then, the question of whether there's going to be a paper mm -hmm. is a vague one. Mm -hmm. There may be a paper. Mm -hmm. Of course, I leave you to answer whether there will be a patent on this ever. <laughs> forget, forget that the patent should get licensed. Yes. We are told oh, Indians are writing so many patents. Mm -hmm. How many of these patents are getting licensed? That's the main How thing. How many are making money from yes. whoever, that institution? Yes. And then don't start saying like some babu mm -hmm. that a company should not become rich. Company, company should become company rich. should become rich. Yes, absolutely. I have seen and heard of so many projects. Uh -huh. Well, some Babu has sat and said, I believe, oh, if we do all this, the companies will become very rich. And what's the problem with that? That's the whole point. That's the whole point of science that they can economic activity. And I've heard a lot of problems from many people in Indian academics. I'll talk about this at the end, but let's listen to them. It's a very, very interesting discussion. Let's continue. I don't know. What do they have against that? What? See, I am probably <laughs> not a very clever person. So... I do not know what is the reason. If the companies become rich, the country becomes rich. The country prospers, everybody prospers, everybody gets jobs. What's it the problem? Would see, it would seem obvious to some people, but I don't. But, <laughs> but I hear more and more and more of this kind of talk mm. at very high levels. Mm. I'm mm. not talking about, you know, some small fry mm. uh, doing this and that. Mm. Very, very big things where some policy decisions and all will. Is there still too much of this? And we scientists are. At the end of the day, maybe the fault is also with, we are very different. Mm. We are very different and some governments have to be able to empathize and sympathize with us. That, that the, most of the Indian scientists are really trying to do something genuine. Yes, I agree with that. Yes. Most, 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 I tell you that. Yeah. I, it is only the system and the circumstances that have made many of us into cabbages. May I ask a question? How do you define a scientist from, let's say you have a professor, is every professor a scientist? Certainly not. Certainly not, that's the thing. So most scientists, actual scientists, are do, trying to do something. Most professors may not be doing something. Uh, <laughs> most professors may not be doing anything, yes. I think they've become very self-satisfied. There is very little emphasis on research. Another thing. They research the salaries and all of these professors in central universities mm. and the central institutions is way too high. Mm -hmm. And we are overpaid mm. and in a sense underworked. Yes. Uh, there has to be little more self-accountability in all this. Yes. You know, what's the use of all this? If all that the guy wants to do is to come in the morning and uh, go to the canteen and start eating vadas. Have a nice time. Vada coffee, a stay. Mm -hmm. I will tell you about the Guwahati and Khokha market towards the end of the video. There is something like this. Professor Shab comes to drink tea and eat tea. Let's continue. Prasakko, if you have that vada and coffee, he is very happy. And then he will dream about pakodas and coffee. That's it. That is his aim in life. So we need to identify and promote the right people. Correct. That's what needs to happen. Maybe that process is broken. But did it ever happen? Was it ever there? It was never there, right? I don't think it was there. Yeah. I am mentioning all these fights of Raman and mm. all these people. Mm. I don't think it was ever there. Right. It's just become the admission more rigid, rigidized and regimentalized. That you're facing this vast uh, bureaucratic monster. Yes, it's a, and that's what's stifling the growth of science. So even you appoint some young people who are very good. Mm. After two, three, four, five years. They'll be part they of get, the system. They, they get fed. No, I think the the dirty crowd is there. Hmm. They just get fed up and switch off. They'll switch off or they'll leave some, they'll go somewhere off else. or they'll do something routine. Yeah. Otherwise they'll leave, they'll go back to America. I don't know what they do. Let's hmm. go upstairs to a very, very interesting spot. Yes. into this room. This was electrical technology. I see, this one. Or it was a library. In that case, the library was up here and electrical technology was down below or the other way around. Okay. So, 
there were just two two halls like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at the scale in which this whole thing was conceived. Yes. Thinking big. Thinking big is the main thing, isn't Thinking it? Thinking big. Yeah. Yes. So after what? 108 means about 114 years it's been going on. Yes. So, Abhijit, I think we are reaching the end of our journey. Right. And we can look at the statue of the great man again. Huh. What a what beautiful view. Perspective, at least trying to look him in the eye and <laughs> <laughs> seeing him. Whether he would be disappointed, happy, what he would think of all of us today. I'm not sure he would be very happy. I don't think he'd be that happy. Hmm. Uh, that's my feeling. Now, since I've come on the program, I will report it. Hmm. Uh, see, I. It needs, these things need to be said. No, they have Nobody to be is willing to say these look, things. Look, look, look. This was primarily set up as an institute. Hmm rather than a university. Yes. Because when they, they called it the Indian University or whatever it is, it is officially, technically speaking, what is called a deemed university because we have students and we turn out degrees. Mm. But there are other places like this in the rest of the world. Mm. The two that come to my mind and the two places which I am very familiar with having been there often and having talked to many of the scientists there, mm -hmm at the Weizmann Institute Israel. in Rehoboth, mm -hmm. Israel mm -hmm. and the Eteha in Zurich. Okay. I can also say Technisches Hochschule. Okay. I don't pronounce the German very correctly, but Eteha is what it is called. Mm -hmm. These were also set up like research institutes. Okay. With this small student component. Mm -hmm. In the sense, when I say that small student, these places did not indulge in a large amount of undergraduate teaching. Mm. Undergraduate teaching is something that's come to the IISC only recently. I see. Yes. So it was considered that there should be certain places within the general science thing, which are not outright research labs, like the government labs and so on, mm. of DRDO and you know space and those are regular labs. Yes. But there is some halfway house between a regular university and a full lab with no students. Right. And those were these research institutes. Mm. So IISC, Weizmann and ETHA are in this category. Oak Ridge National Lab okay. in America. In the US, yeah. Ah, that is again a, a typical example with a nice umbilical connection with the Department of Atomic Energy of America. Mm. Right. So that, that's also another institute that comes to mind. Mm. There is a Pacific Northwestern lab, which I think is more of a in Oregon, okay. which has more of a research component. Mm -hmm. But you see, if you look at Eteha and look at Weizmann, mm -hmm. then I will say we are not. Okay. Comparative. I have to compare. No? Yes, of course. Finally, I have to say, am I better than this fellow? Am I worse than this? Absolutely. Fellow? Yes. So, the kind of the sentiments that guided the people mm -hmm. when they started these three places mm -hmm. was totally the same. Right. Yes. Weizmann, I mean, yeah. Time Weizmann was the person who discovered fermentation technology, mm. which saved Britain in World War II. Right. And he, that's why he was the first president of Israel. Mm. And the British literally gave him, you know, sort of Israel like a gift and made him. So he is the person who's he's a chemist. Mm. One, one more chemist. One more chemist. <laughs> so he right. started the Weizmann Institute. Mm. And uh, see, finally, when Ada Yonath gets the Nobel Prize after 50 years, she is a person who was a student and then a researcher and everything in that place. Right. And uh, very strange. When you walk through the Weizmann, it reminds you of IIS. I see. Ah, and so the ethos and everything is somewhat similar. Mm -hmm. And then, then one asks, what they can do, how come we have not been able to? Mm -hmm. Eteha, of course, is older and it has got a galaxy of Nobel. Mm -hmm. So, there again, it is... Uh, Something, something that these people have got which we don't have. One thing I see is that when you go back to the birth of quantum mechanics, we had people like Niels Bohr, Max Planck, Heisenberg. These were all youngsters in the 20s. Niels Bohr was given an entire institute like this when he was around 30 years old. We don't have that system. In we here. don't have that system. For example, Raman, when he was asked to uh, start, become a professor in Madras University, mm -hmm. Uh, in the anxious years for Raman when he was not very pleased here mm -hmm. and he was looking for a place I think to go, the Madras University asked him and he said no I can't come 
but I've got a young student called Ramachandran. Mm. Uh, he's 28 years old. Will you please take him as a professor. Okay. They appointed him. I see. It was no, done. No selection committees. No, you know, mm. experts right. coming, aeroplane coming, <laughs> going. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Expert has come. Expert has not come. Mm. They have appointed him. Right. G. N. Ramachandran went there and he got the structure of collagen and the Faisai plot, there you which go. is today called Ramachandran plot. Right. Right. But that he missed a Nobel Prize and all, I don't care. Doesn't okay. matter. That's Nobel fine. Prize he did, missed him. He did the, yeah. He, 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 <laughs> he, he, he doesn't matter. It's not technical. Yeah, yeah. Only because you got a Nobel Prize doesn't mean you're good. Absolutely. Yeah. But Raman said, 28 years old, take him as a full professor. They took him. That's how it should be. Today, today will any 28 year old fellow is trying to get into a GR, JRF to start a PhD. That's what's happening in India and that's where everything is failing. I say, look, they have prime ministers who are under 40. Yes. Here and here we have put some fellows, uh, only if you are above 70, you qualify for anything in this country. This culture has to go. It must go. It yes. Has to go. It must go not only from Just because you are old, it doesn't mean you are gold. <laughs> I think on that note, yes, sir. let us stop it and pay homage to this great man. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for this talk. Wonderful talking to you. I could speak for hours, but we'll stop Abhijit, here. Abhijit, that's <laughs> nice. But anyway, I'm glad that, as I said, for the first time, you're making a venture into a live podcast. Yes, sir. So now we are waiting to see many more of these in many other areas. Today Thank you, science, sir. Science, tomorrow it will be some other endeavor. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Wow. What a deep and interesting podcast. I would first like to thank um, Dr. Abhijit Chabra for making this podcast live at ISC Bangalore which was very very important or ISC Bangalore se shuru karna apne aap mein ek bahut badi baat hai kyunki bahut se logon ka ambition hai ISC Bangalore mein padhna aur bahut se logon ki fascination hai bahut se log fans hain jaise mere jaise ISC Bangalore ke to ye podcast a live podcast ki journey wahan se shuru karna i think is a major feat for uh, him as well aur hamare jaise viewers ke liye to definitely hai hi aur mujhe lagta hai aane wale samay mein hame aise aur podcast jo hai wo dekhne ko milenge so I was very excited for this. I was starting से बहुत excited था मैंने ये video बहुत deeply देखी और अभी तो मैं और भी ज़्यादा जिसको कहते हैं refreshed हूँ मज़ा आ गया ये video देखके और अभी बात करते हैं ISC बेंगलोर की ISC बेंगलोर के जो visionaries हैं जिन्होंने इसको establish करने में जो अपना योगदान दिया है उसके बारे में हमें starting में इस podcast से पता चला J N Tata जिन्होंने एज अ बिजनेस मैन इसको सपोर्ट किया विवेकानंद जी जिन्होंने स्पिरिचुअली इसके बारे में थॉट प्रोसेस रखा और उसके बाद जो पॉलिटिकल एलिट पॉलिटिकल सिस्टम जब पहले था तो वो राजा महाराजा महारानियों की तरफ से ही चलता था तो उन्होंने जो लैंड ग्रांट की और जो मनी ग्रांट किया बिजनेसमैन और पॉलिटिकल एलिट ने वो एक ऐसा फाइन इंस्टीट्यूट बनाने में कारगर हुआ जो कि आज हमारे सामने इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंस की फॉर्म में है 100 एंड मोर देन 125 इयर्स से जो है साइंटिफिक एक्सेलेंस इंडिया में प्रोड्यूस कर रहा है जो कि अपने आप में एक बहुत बड़ी बात है और उस समय में ऐसे ही होता था कि आपके बिजनेसमैन जो है वो चीफ पैटर्नर्स होते पैटर्नर्स होते थे काफी सारे वेंचर्स में चाहे वो आप म्यूजिक की इंडस्ट्री में देख लीजिए या एजुकेशन इंडस्ट्री में साइंटिफिक एक्सप्लोरेशन में देख लीजिए तो यही लोग जो है वो मनी देते थे बिजनेसमैन के साथ मिलकर मनी और लैंड और बाकी रिसोर्सेज जो भी एक इंस्टीट्यूट को बनाने के लिए चाहिए तो उन्हीं लोगों से ये आता था और आज भी ये है इसकी मैं प्राइम एग्जांपल आज के समय में देता हूं कि यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स में आपको एक बैकमैन इंस्टीट्यूट मिल जाएगा ऑफ इंटरडिसिप्लिनरी साइंसेज यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ इलेनाया टर्बाना शैम्पेन तो वो बनाया ही इसीलिए गया था ताकि इंटर इंटरडिसिप्लिनरी रिसर्च को प्रमोट किया जाए और दूसरा आपको जो एग्जाम्पल मुझे पता है वो एल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस आपको आई थिंक सियाटल में है वो दिख जाएगा जो आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस को आगे लेके जाने के लिए बनाया गया और इन्होंने एक बहुत ही अच्छा प्राइम डिस्टिंक्शन भी बताया कि इंस्टीट्यूट और यूनिवर्सिटी और बाकी साइंटिफिक रिसर्च लैब्स में क्या डिफरेंस होता है तो यूनिवर्सिटी जैसे फुल फ्लैज यूनिवर्सिटी है जिसमें अंडर ग्रेजुएट प्रोग्राम भी होगा ग्रेजुएट प्रोग्राम भी होगा वो डिग्रीज हैंड आउट करेंगे और दूसरी तरफ जो है रिसर्च लैब्स हैं जैसे इसरो की रिसर्च लैब्स हैं डी की रिसर्च लैब्स हैं वो वहाँ पर जो है वो डिग्री ग्रांटिंग या ग्रेजुएट या अंडर ग्रेजुएट प्रोग्राम्स नहीं होते सिर्फ को साइंटिस्ट वहाँ पर बैठ के अपना रिसर्च करते हैं और उसको प्रोडक्शन लेवल के ऊपर ले जाके डेवलपमेंट भी करते हैं ताकि वो काम आ सके और जो प्रोजेक्ट्स हैं वो 
उनको रियलिटी में भी आ, लोगों को देखने को आ, मिले जो इसरो एंड डी करते हैं और इंस्टीट्यूट्स लाई समवेयर इन बिटवीन के आई बेंगलोर में आ, अभी जो है वो अंडर ग्रेजुएट प्रोग्राम शुरू हुआ है ट्रेडिशनली अंडर ग्रेजुएट प्रोग्राम आई बेंगलोर में नहीं होता था और सिर्फ ग्रेजुएट प्रोग्राम्स होते थे वो भी कम्प्लीटली रिसर्च फोकस्ड और उनका रोल यही होता था किसी न किसी रिसर्च इन्वेस्टिगेशन को करना और उससे पेपर निकाल के पब्लिश करना नोटेबल साइंटिफिक कम्युनिटी में उसका पब्लिश करने का रीज़न यही होता है कि आप अपने क्लेम्स जो हैं वो बना के वेरीफाई करते हैं अपने डेटा और अपने एक्सपेरिमेंट्स अपने रिसर्च के थ्रू और फिर वो वैलिडेट करवाते हैं पूरी दुनिया के प्रोमिनेंट साइंटिस्ट से कि वो एग्री करते हैं आपकी थ्योरी के साथ या नहीं एग्री करते ताकि उसको एक एक्सटर्नल वैलिडेशन भी मिल जाए एंड देन उसको आप पेटेंट्स के थ्रू या किसी और तरीके से थ्रू कमर्शलाइज करने की कोशिश करते हैं तो यही फंडामेंटल प्रोसेस है साइंटिफिक रिसर्च का लेकिन अनफॉर्चुनेटली जैसे इन्होंने हाईलाइट किया कि ये सोच के कि इससे जो है वो एक बिजनेस जो है वो ज़्यादा मनी कमा लेगा एक रिसर्च से अगर वो कमर्शियलाइज होगी या और इंसेंटिवाइज हो जाएगा वो बिजनेस और उसकी वजह से कई सारे प्रोजेक्ट्स को वो किल किया जाता है तो दैट्स नॉट राइट क्योंकि अल्टीमेटली अगर वो बिजनेस मनी कमाएगा तो वो बिजनेस बिजनेस अपनी ग्रोथ के में ही मनी लगाएगा और उस ग्रोथ से जो है वो जॉब अपॉर्चुनिटीज़ क्रिएट होंगी और भी रिसर्च के लिए जो पैसा जनरेट होगा ये सब पॉजिटिव आस्पेक्ट्स जो है वो हमें देखने चाहिए और बाकी आईएससी बेंगलोर की ग्लोरी के बारे में इन्होंने पूरी डिस्कशन की कि कहाँ कौन कौन से डायरेक्टर ने कैसे कैसे पॉजिटिवली कंट्रीब्यूट किया आईएससी बेंगलोर को दो डिपार्टमेंट के इंस्टीट्यूट से इतना बड़ा इंस्टीट्यूट 400 एकड़ में बनाने के लिए और इतने सारे प्रोग्राम्स जो है अभी वो रन कर रहा है इंस्टीट्यूट और नॉट ओनली साइंटिफिक डिसिप्लिन जैसे केमिस्ट्री फिजिक्स और बाकी सब हुए बट अभी इंजीनियरिंग डिसिप्लिन भी वहाँ पर हैं और जैसा कि आपने नोटिस किया ही होगा कि बेंगलोर में नॉट ओनली आई बेंगलोर है लेकिन बाकी और बहुत बड़ी आईटी इंडस्ट्री जो है वो वहाँ पे इस्टेब्लिश है एक तो वेदर बेंगलोर का सूटेबल है और दूसरा ऐसे बड़े इंस्टीट्यूट्स होने से वहाँ पे टैलेंट की कमी नहीं होती जो कंपनीज वहाँ पे अपना जो है हेड क्वार्टर्स जहाँ अपने ऑफिस इस्टेब्लिश करना चाहते हैं वो डायरेक्टली ऐसे बढ़िया इंस्टीट्यूट में जाके स्टूडेंट्स को हायर कर सकते हैं रिसर्च में कोलेबोरेट कर सकते हैं प्रोफेसर के साथ ताकि जो है उनकी जो है टेक्निकल एडवांसमेंट में कोई कमी ना आए तो दिस इज़ अ वेरी वेरी गुड इंस्टीट्यूट जो इंडिया में इस्टेब्लिश किया गया और अगेन विजनरीज को थैंक्स करना बनता है हम सब का कि उन्होंने एक इतना बढ़िया इंस्टीट्यूट वहाँ पे इस्टेब्लिश किया और उनको फ्लरिश करने के लिए रिसोर्स दिए कि वो आज तक जो है वो पिनाकल ऑफ इंडियन साइंस बना हुआ है और मेजर लर्निंग सीट है जो लोग साइंस पढ़ना चाहते हैं इंजीनियरिंग पढ़ना चाहते हैं वहाँ पर जा जाके पढ़ना उनका ड्रीम है तो दिस इज़ वेरी वेरी इम्पॉर्टेंट उसके अलावा मुझे इस वीडियो में एक नई चीज़ पता चली कि जादवपुर यूनिवर्सिटी जो कि बहुत ही फेमस यूनिवर्सिटी है और वो फेमस इस सेंस में है कि बहुत से एलुमिनाई ने वहाँ पे बहुत जादवपुर यूनिवर्सिटी के एलुमिनाई ने बहुत सा अच्छा काम किया है दुनिया में और उसको इस्टेब्लिश करने के लिए त्रिपुरा के जो रूलर हैं उन्होंने जो है वो मनी दी इसके बारे में आई थिंक बहुत से लोगों को नहीं पता होगा और इस पॉडकास्ट में ये रेवोल्यूशन होना भी बहुत इम्पॉर्टेंट है और हमें यह समझना चाहिए कि कैसे ये सब इंटरकनेक्टेड है कि मनी से ही आपकी साइंस चलेगी मनी से ही आपके एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट्स चलेंगे और ऐसा सोचना कि एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट्स को तो पैसे की ज़रूरत ही नहीं है ऐसा नहीं होता आपको रिसर्च फंड करने की क्योंकि रिसर्च इज़ अ वेरी कैपिटल इंटेंसिव एंड मतलब बहुत रिस्की बिजनेस है मोस्ट ऑफ द रिसर्च फेल्स मोस्ट ऑफ द रिसर्च इज़ इन करेक्ट क्योंकि हमें uh, हम एक्सपेरिमेंट्स करते हैं कुछ uh, चीज़ों के ऊपर हम अपने रिजल्ट्स uh, ले आते हैं और फेलियर होने के चांसेस बहुत ज़्यादा होते हैं बहुत कम रिसर्च होती है वो जो कमर्शियलाइज uh, होती है लेकिन उस कम रिसर्च तक पहुँचने के लिए आपको बहुत सारी गलतियाँ करनी पड़ेंगी एक्सपेरिमेंटल गलतियाँ करनी पड़ेंगी तभी जाके आप जो है वो uh, आपको पता चलेगा कि क्या काम करता है और क्या काम नहीं करता और जो काम करता है उससे आप वो इतनी कमर्शियल वैल्यू जनरेट कर सकते हैं कि आपका जो नहीं काम करता है जो भी रिसर्च से आपके फेलियर्स हुए हैं उसको वो कवर अप कर दे तो दैट इज द होल आइडिया बिहाइंड डूइंग साइंटिफिक रिसर्च ताकि उससे uh, इतने फेलियर्स होने के बावजूद कुछ ऐसा uh, जरूर निकलेगा जो कि लॉन्ग टर्म में नेशन uh, को बेनिफिट देगा तो इस चीज को सपोर्ट करने के लिए स्टार स्टेक होल्डर्स चाहे वो पोलिटिकल एलिट है चाहे वो uh, आपके बिजनेसमैन uh, हैं इन सबको सपोर्ट uh, करना पड़ता है तो ये uh, एक बहुत ही इंटरेस्टिंग आस्पेक्ट इस पॉडकास्ट uh, से उजागर हुआ और बाकी इन्होंने टूर दिया आईएससी बेंगलोर का जो बहुत ही बड़ा लश्करीन कैंपस है आपके पास बहुत वर्ल्ड क्लास फैसिलिटीज अवेलेबल हैं वर्ल्ड क्लास फैसिल फैकल्टी अवेलेबल है और साथ साथ वर्ल्ड क्लास स्टूडेंट्स भी अवेलेबल हैं जो
टाटा ऑडिटोरियम है वहाँ पे जहाँ पे आ, मैंने जाके अपना पेपर प्रेजेंट किया था और वहाँ तब मैं उस समय पे वेवलेट्स के ऊपर काम कर रहा था तो मुझे याद है कि एक आ, वेवलेट्स की पायनियर डॉक्टर इनग्रिड डेबोशिस वहाँ पे आई हुई थी तो मैं उनसे भी मिला और उनके बारे में जाना है और मैं खास तौर पे डेबोशिस वेबलेट्स के ऊपर ही काम कर रहा था उस समय पे तो मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगा वहाँ पे आ, बहुत मज़ा आया एक तो कैंपस को देख के साथ में वहाँ पे जो साइंटिफिक एलिट आई हुई थी लोगों से मिल और उनके रिसर्च के बारे में जान के काफ़ी मज़ा आया मुझे आ, और उसके अलावा इंडिया की साइंस में आ, इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंस का बहुत बड़ा रोल है जैसे इन्होंने पॉइंट आउट किया कि बाकी इंस्टीट्यूट्स आईआईटी खड़गपुर ले लीजिए सिर्फ वही जो है वो इंडियन कंट्रीब्यूशन से बना है लेकिन दूसरे आईआईटीज़ को इस्टेब्लिश करने लिए करने के लिए जो है वो फॉरेन इंस्टीट्यूट के साथ वो जो है कलेबोरेशन की गई और इसमें जो है वो मेजर रोल आगे आपका फॉरन इन्फ्लुंस का ये भी देखने को मिलेगा कि जो भी डिग्रीज़ पी एच ग्रांट होती हैं जैसे मैंने पहले पॉइंट आउट किया वो फ़ौरन जाती हैं वेलीडेशन के लिए तो ये अभी फ़ौरन वेलीडेशन अभी तक पूरी तरीके से आ, इंडिया से गया नहीं है यह पॉइंट भी इन्होंने हाईलाइट किया जो कि जाना आ, आ, इसको जाना पड़ेगा अगर इंडिया को जो है वो सेल्फ रिलायंट होना है तो आपको आ, इसकी जरूरत नहीं है कि आप अपनी पीएचडी डिग्रीज या बाकी रिसर्च आ, जो है वो फॉरेन वैलिडेशन के लिए वेट करते रहें और अपने आप से जो है वो चीजें आ, ना करें आ, इसकी बहुत बड़ी एग्जाम्पल आपको मेडिकल रिसर्च में मिलेगी कि इंडिया में कोई भी प्रोडक्ट अगर आपको मेडिकली लॉन्च करना है तो वो यूजली ये अपने शार्क टैंक में भी देखा हुआ है तो यूजली वो ये क्वेश्चन पूछते हैं कि इज दिस एफ डी भाई एफ डी ए इज़ एन एजेंसी इन यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स फॉर कमर्शलाइजेशन ऑफ मेडिकल प्रोडक्ट्स इट्स नॉट एन इंडियन एजेंसी तो आपको एफ टी ए क्लियरेंस की क्यों जरूरत है आप ये क्यों नहीं पूछते कि ये काउंसिल ऑफ मेडिकल रिसर्च ऑफ इंडिया से अप्रूव्ड है या नहीं क्योंकि ये अवेयरनेस होनी बहुत ज़रूरी है आप जब तक हम ये सोचते रहेंगे कि हाँ फॉरेन का अप्रूवल होगा तभी जो इंडिया में टेक्नोलॉजी कमर्शियलाइज होगी तो वो लिमिटेशन हमेशा रहेगी आपको अपने इंस्टीट्यूट्स को स्ट्रॉन्ग करना है काउंसिल ऑफ मेडिकल रिसर्च या जो भी रिलेटेड इंस्टीट्यूट है वो उसको चेक करे और उस टेक्नोलॉजी को अप्रूव या डिसअप्रूव करे इंडियन मार्केट में लाने के लिए मैंने देखा मतलब शार्क टैंक में एक दो चीज़ें मैंने देखी वो सीधा क्वेश्चन ये पूछते हैं इस दिस एफ टी अप्रूवड या एफ क्लियरेंस है इसको वाई डू यू नीड एफ क्लियरेंस टू रन बिजनेस इन इंडिया यू नीड क्लियरेंस फॉर इंडियन अथॉरिटीज तो ये थॉट प्रोसेस का चेंज होना बहुत जरूरी है बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है इंडियन टेक्नोलॉजी कंपनीज को आगे पुश करने के लिए और इन्होंने बहुत सारी रेड टेप और एकेडमिक ब्यूरोक्रेसी का भी मैंशन किया वो तो आज के समय में भी बहुत है वो मुझे नहीं पता था कि पहले समय में इतनी थी लेकिन इन्होंने सी एन डॉक्टर सी वी रमन का जो बताया उनके उसके साथ तो मुझे लग रहा है कि ये जो है वो प्रसिस्टेंट प्रॉब्लम है जो बहुत समय से चलती आ रही है और अब आज के ज़माने में मैं इसकी एग्जांपल दूंगा कि जैसे आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस की फील्ड बहुत आगे बढ़ रही है तो लेकिन इसको रन करने के लिए इन कंप्यूटर प्रोग्राम्स को रन करने के लिए बहुत सारे कंप्यूटेशनल रिसोर्स चाहिए होते हैं और ख़ास तौर पर जी चाहिए होते हैं और एक दो मशीन अगर आपने अपनी लैब में रख ली तो उससे कोई खास फ़र्क नहीं पड़ता आपको पूरा क्लस्टर चाहिए होता है जी पी ताकि आप जो है वो बड़ी बड़ी रिसर्च प्रोजेक्ट्स वहाँ पे कर सकें तो मेरे ध्यान में ये आया कि काफ़ी सारे प्रोजेक्ट्स जो रिजेक्ट हो जाते हैं जिसमें इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बिल्डिंग की बात होती है लेकिन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर तो बिल्ड करना पड़ेगा अगर आप आ, इंडिया को जो है वो एआई में वर्ल्ड लीडर होना पड़ेगा आ, होना है अगर ये इंडिया के एम्बिशंस हैं तो वहाँ पर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बिल्डिंग में जो है वो इन्वेस्टमेंट करनी पड़ेगी और इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बिल्डिंग रिक्वायर्स बिग कंप्यूटर्स बिग मेमरी स्पेस एंड बिग जिसको कहते हैं ग्राफिकल प्रोसेसिंग यूनिट्स या अगर टी पी आते हैं या कुछ भी ऐसी एडवांसमेंट्स आती हैं तो वो जो है वो गवर्नमेंट को उसमें रिसर्च इन्वेस्टमेंट करनी पड़ेगी ताकि जो इंडियन रिसर्चर्स हैं वो उसमें अपना रिसर्च कर सकें अपना एक्सपेरिमेंट्स कर सकें और कुछ अच्छा जो है वो इंडिया के लिए बिल्ड कर सकें और टाटाज की जहाँ तक कंट्रीब्यूशन की बात है ना सिर्फ इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंस वी शुड बी थैंकफुल फॉर अदर prominent institutes that they established in India and one of them is Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. फिर आपके पास Tata Memorial Center है जो कि cancer hospital है बहुत बड़ा मुंबई में तो उसके थ्रू काफ़ी सारे रिसर्च प्रोग्राम्स और बाकी जो क्लिनिकल डायग्नोसिस और बाकी जो डॉक्टर्स की फैसिलिटी आम लोगों तक पहुंचाना वो भी वहाँ पे उनको फाइनेंशियली सपोर्ट किया जाता है तो ये बहुत ही इंटरेस्टिंग कंट्रीब्यूशन है टाटाज की इंडियन इकोसिस्टम में और इंडियन सोसाइटी के लिए क्योंकि टाटाज न सिर्फ बिजनेस रन करते हैं बट ऑल्सो बड़ी बड़ी सोसाइटल प्रॉब्लम्स को सॉल्व करते हैं और उस सोसाइटल प्रॉब्लम्स को सॉल्व करने का तरीका सबसे बेस्ट आपका साइंटिफिक एजुकेशन मेडिकल 
एजुकेशन इसके इंस्टीट्यूट इस्टेब्लिश करना है तो ये एक बहुत ही बड़ी कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन है बहुत अच्छी कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन है आई थिंक वी ऑल शुड अप्रीशिएट दिस एंड वी शुड ऑल्सो अप्रीशिएट डॉक्टर अभिजीत चावड़ा फॉर ब्रिंगिंग दिस पॉडकास्ट टू अस जिससे कि बहुत मज़ा आया क्योंकि मैं छोटा होता था छोटे होते से ही मुझे फैसिनेशन साइंस में दो चीज़ों से शुरू हुई थी एक तो इस चीज़ से शुरू हुई थी कि प्रोफेसर यशपाल शर्मा जी का कॉलम आता होता था अखबार में तो वहाँ पे वो कुछ साइंटिफिक क्वेश्चंस के आंसर करते थे तो वो हम पढ़ते थे बहुत मज़ा आता था उसको पढ़ के वहाँ से थोड़ा इंटरेस्ट क्यूरियोसिटी जो है वो शुरू हुई और उसके अलावा इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंस के बारे में बहुत किस्से सुने थे कि प्रोमिनेंट इंस्टीट्यूट है पहले ये किशोर वैज्ञानिक प्रोत्साहन योजना भी चलाते थे के तो मैंने उसमें पार्टिसिपेट भी किया था तो वो मेरा प्रपोजल या जो भी प्रोजेक्ट मैंने बनाया था तो वो इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंस में ही गया था वहाँ के रिसर्च ने ही आ, उसको आई थिंक एवेल्यूएट किया था ये जो भी किया था लेकिन इन आ, सब की चीज़ों की वजह से आ, जो है ना एक बहुत ही स्ट्रॉन्ग इम्पैक्ट है इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंस का आ, एक आ, जिसको कहते हैं कि बर्डिंग रिसर्चर और बर्डिंग साइंटिफिक ब्रेन के ऊपर और बड़े होकर तो खैर हमें और भी ज़्यादा वैल्यू पता चली और बाहर आके भी हमें वैल्यू पता चली कि इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंस जो है वो बहुत रिस्पेक्टेड इंस्टीट्यूट है और बहुत बढ़िया इंस्टीट्यूट है और इसके अलावा मैं आपको बताता हूँ आई आई गुवाहाटी के फैकल्टी की बात ये इन्होंने सही पॉइंट आउट किया कि आ, आपको वो फैकल्टी जो है वो बहुत आसानी से जो है चाय के कॉर्नर पे मिल जाएगी वो चाय के कॉर्नर आई आई के अंदर हर आई आई टी गुवाहाटी का एकेडमिक कॉम्प्लेक्स जो है वो ब्लॉक्स में डिवाइडेड है तो ब्लॉक वन ब्लॉक टू ब्लॉक थ्री एंड सो ऑन हर ब्लॉक में जो है वो अपनी चाय की जो है वो दुकान है और वहाँ पे खाने को भी मिल जाता है तो प्रोफेसर लोग वहाँ पे बैठ के नॉट ओनली प्रोफेसर बट स्टूडेंट्स वहाँ पे बैठ के गप्पे लड़ाते हैं और प्रोफेसर की गप्पे लड़ानी जो है वो ज़्यादा हाईलाइट हो जाती हैं क्योंकि उनका काम कुछ और है और वो वहाँ पर आपको घंटों घंटों बिताते हुए नज़र आ जाएंगे और उसके अलावा आई आई में एक बाहर खोखा मार्केट थी वहाँ पर आपको ड्यूरिंग द ऑफिस टाइम जब आफ्टरनून होता है या अगर बारिश का टाइम हो जिसमें धूप वगैरह नहीं निकली तो आपको वहाँ पे भी लोग मिल जाएंगे जो कि वहाँ पे जाके चाय पीते हैं पकोड़े वगैरह खाते हैं तो अपना टाइम वेस्ट करते हैं ये इन्होंने राइटली पॉइंट आउट किया कि उनकी उनके ऑब्जेक्टिव्स जो हैं वो कमिटेड टूवर्ड्स रिसर्च एंड एकेडमिक एक्सेलेंस होने चाहिए ऐसा ही नहीं है सारे प्रोफेसर ऐसे uh, ऐसे ही हैं मैं एक बार प्रोफेसर सी एन राव से मिला उन्होंने काफ़ी एग्जाम्पल्स दी कि कई प्रोफेसर ऐसे भी होते हैं जो uh, खाना तक नहीं खाते अपने काम के प्रति इतने कमिटेड होते हैं और डिसिप्लिन होते हैं और बहुत से प्रोफेसर मैंने भी ऐसे देखे हैं उनके साथ हमने काम भी किया है हर बंदा पूरा नहीं होता हर बंदा अच्छा नहीं होता तो हमें एक बैलेंस्ड अप्रोच देखनी चाहिए कि किस प्रोफेसर्स को हमने साइंटिफिक फंडिंग देनी है ताकि वो आगे जाके जो है इंडिया की ओवरऑल इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ में कंट्रीब्यूट कर सके और ये थॉट प्रोसेस हमें बाहर निकालना पड़ेगा कि किसी भी साइंस को कमर्शलाइज करने के करने के बाद जो है वो कोई कंपनी प्राइवेट कंपनी जो है वो रिच हो जाएगी प्राइवेट कंपनी रिच होगी तभी इंडिया को ग्रोथ देखने को मिलेगी जो फाइव ट्रिलियन डॉलर इकोनॉमी बनाने का सपना है वो तभी पूरा होगा एटी ऑफ द कंपनी is uh, of the workforce in the US works in private uh, industry 20% here almost uh, jo hai wo government uh, control karti hai to aisa agar aapko utne level ki economic growth dekhni hai to us level ki jo hai wo facilities bhi banani padengi us level ki jo hai uh, फ्रीडम भी देने पड़ेगी आ, लोगों को कि वो अपने साइंटिफिक परस्यूट्स टेक्नोलॉजिकल परस्यूट्स और बिजनेस परस्यूट्स जो है वो फॉलो कर सकें और गवर्नमेंट जो है वो उसके लिए गवर्नमेंट या ब्यूरोक्रेसी नॉट ओनली गवर्नमेंट बट ब्यूरोक्रेसी जो है वो उनके लिए प्रॉब्लम्स जो है वो क्रिएट ना करें उम्मीद करते हैं कि आपको मेरे विचार अच्छे लगे होंगे अगर अच्छे लगे तो प्लीज़ इस वीडियो को थम्सअप ज़रूर कीजिए और अगर आपने अभी तक चैनल सब्सक्राइब नहीं किया तो प्लीज़ चैनल को सब्सक्राइब करके हमें सपोर्ट ज़रूर कीजिए आपकी कोई रिकमेंडेशन है कोई वीडियो आप चाहते हैं हमें देखनी चाहिए वो भी कमेंट सेक्शन में आप हमें जरूर बताइए आपकी कोई और फीडबैक है कोई और सजेशन है वो भी आप नॉन बेसिक लैंग्वेज में हमें कमेंट सेक्शन में बता सकते हैं आपको डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स में एक फॉर्म का लिंक मिल जाएगा वहां पे भी आप अपनी रेकमेंडेशन जो है हमें दे सकते हैं और अपने फ्रेंड्स एंड फैमिली के साथ ये चैनल जरूर शेयर कीजिए ताकि हम ज्यादा से ज्यादा लोगों तक अपने विचार जो है पहुंचा सके तो चलिए मिलेंगे आपको अपनी अगली वीडियो में तब तक के लिए स्टे सेफ स्टे हेल्दी बाय बाय